Hi everybody, it's uh, John back again with another model inbox review. I've done an inbox review on this model subject before when I did a comparison build between the new and the old tooled matchbox Dassault Dornier Brigade Alphajet. But today I'm bringing to you um, another model that could be considered to be a complete howler. But before we start going into the inbox review, I just want to uh, elaborate on a couple of things. Today, looking at this image here, you've got Alphajet 3 and 4. Um, no, sorry, it's Alphajet 1 and 2. And these two prototypes were exactly as the Alphajet was, was um, shown to the public. Uh, originally, at, I think it was originally at the Parish Air Show in about 1973, 1974. And these two prototypes, the French one on the left is the um, Ecole or Alphajet Model A. And the one on the right is the German um, Alphajet Weapons Trainer or Alphajet E. Uh, sorry, Alphajet A and the French one was the Alphajet E. F stood for Ecole um, and A stood for Attack. Um, but the aircraft originally were pretty similar and they built both aircraft so that the Germans and the French Army de l'Air could evaluate the aircraft um, and win the contract which the French and German governments wanted to fulfil for their respective air forces, the Army de l'Air in France and the Luftwaffe in Germany. And these two aircraft were just as they were when they were in, originally released in, for the flying evaluation programme. The aircraft were all finished in silver and the French and German aircraft had um, they had red uh, flashes over the air intakes and black um, sun, sun visors across the front of the nose. Uh, but other than that, the aircraft are pretty much identical. Um, the Germans ended up with an aircraft that looked like this. This was the Alpha Jet A or weapons attack trainer. Um, and this probably would have been taken in the mid 70s uh, when the German Luftwaffe were taking the aircraft into their inventory. And I can't build this kit because there are only parts to build the French prototype in the model and building. And when you hear which model and building, um, try not to laugh, but it's actually not as bad as people would think. Anyway, that's the German uh, prototype. The kits we're actually looking at before we go into sorry before we go into that, I just need to also mention the fact that one of the prototypes, I think it was Alpha Jet A or Alpha Jet One, was actually painted um, French and German on either side. You had French on the port side and German on the starboard side. And to prove that, you've got this image which shows it from the, uh, the starboard side. And this is the same image of the same aircraft from the port side. And you can see this VFW vertical takeoff type aircraft, which is in the museum next to it. And this is actually an aircraft which is on show. I think it's in Paris somewhere, um, or it might be Toulouse Air Museum. Um, and it was the very first Alpha Jet made, and they repainted it in the German and French prototype markings. Anyway, which kit are we doing? Well, we're doing this one. Yes, it's the Starfix, the dreaded Starfix, Dassault Brigitte Dornier Alpha Jet in 172nd scale. Um, interestingly, you've got an image of the German and the French prototypes on the front of the box. This kit was released in around about 1978 to 1979. It's not very easy to find information exactly when this kit was released. But it was in the very late 70s. Um, and there are decals in the kit to build the German or the French prototypes. But, as you'll see in a minute, there's only a colour plan for the French one. The release that I've got is a 1991 release, which is this one. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, the box I've got is pretty, it's, it's about as bad, as, well, it's probably worse bad than this one. Um, and I don't know whether the original 70s release had the German markings in it, but the 1991 only had the French markings in it. And you'll see them um, in a minute as you'll 
you know, you'll visualize the pictures and everything and the, the images from the box as we could do the uh, inbox review. I just want to leave you with a picture before we, um, before we go into the kit itself. There's not a lot in the boxing history because nobody ever wanted to rebox the Starfix kit, but why would you? Um, this is Alpha Jet 1 and 2 in colour. Um, and you can see how they're supposed to look. The French one actually had a white flash on the top of the, um, the tail fin. And also the these little finlets here, which um, were missing on the original Matchbox kit that I did the comparison build on, but were added to the retooled version of that model. They're missing on the Starfix kit as well. They're completely void. Um, and also quite a lot of the airframe is the wrong shape. Uh, the nose is the wrong shape. The air intakes are the wrong shape. Um, although they're not as bad as the Matchbox kit. Um, the rear jet pipes for the Lars Ark engines, they're not visible on the kit either. So you'll, you'll see a lot of abnormalities in this kit, but I wanted to point out what the actual aircraft should have looked like so that you can see the abnormalities and the problems with the Starfix kit, as you'll see it in a minute. Anyway, let's get into the boxing unboxing if you like and have a look at this kit um let's just try and get the stand to accept the angles i want it to go into i think that's it yeah there's the box the box is pretty beaten up it's held together by sellotape at both ends uh, the image on the front is pretty much what the airfix uh, what the uh, starfix kit is going to look like um, he's not built it particularly well. That should be filled in, shouldn't it? On the back, you've got the colour call-out plan, which in this kit is predominantly silver. There's no red flashes over the air intakes. These are the wrong colour. These This shouldn't be black. And there's quite a bit of this kit that's actually incorrect. The tail fin's completely the wrong shape. The tail planes don't have any di uh, anhedral at all, and they're the wrong shape. Um, yeah, the kit's pretty, it's pretty dire, I'll be honest with you. But it's not as bad as what some Starfix kits are, because I remember building a UH-1B um, earlier. <laughs> earlier, and God, that kit was absolutely dreadful. Anyway, let's have a look at the instruction leaflet first, and then we'll get into the gubbins of the kit itself. The instruction leaflet is pretty, it's A4. Um, and it's pretty simple to understand. You've got some information here and stats in four different languages. I believe the top left hand one is English. The one on the right is German. The one on the bottom left is French. And the, bottom, the one on the bottom right, um, that, could, that could be anything. It could be Dutch. It could be anything. I'm not totally... Um, not totally au fait with the with the actual um, the actual language on that, but if somebody wants to comment in the comments and tell me what that is, I'll, I'll be very happy to understand what that is. Anyway, the instruction leaflet kit builds up in three different stages, and the fourth stage would be the paint color guide. Um, when you see the parts to this kit, I'll make a note of where I think they sourced a lot of the parts from because the Starfix kit of the Alpha Jet, I believe is a complete mix match of a lot of different companies models namely Airfix, Hella, Fujimi um, and yeah I think those three co companies and maybe Matchbox uh, because the fuselage halves in this kit match the Matchbox kit perfectly which is weird because I've tested them when I got this kit. I tested them against the Matchbox kit before I built them. Um, and also the cockpit canopy is a pretty close match to the Matchbox kit as well, which would probably explain why the kit is of the prototype and not of the developmental aircraft. Anyway, in the first section you've got the fuselage assembly, which includes the rudimentary and very simple um, interior, which comprises of two seats and two pilots which when you see the parts in a minute look very much like Airfix pilots. And then you've got the nose cone, which again is similar to the Matchbox construction, and the uh, intakes and jet pipes, which again is similar to the Matchbox construction. And they are telling you to put a little bit of weight in there, as you can see here. 
well you can't actually see it on that image I'm sorry about that there's a weight image there which goes in um, and they're telling you to add some weight to the nose but it doesn't say how much but I would be guessing it's probably about 10 grams um, although the Alpha Jet isn't terrible tail sir section 2 is putting the airframe together and the drop tanks with the pylons and then section 3 is to assemble the undercarriage um, undercarriage oleos wheels and then to fix the cockpit canopy on and from the underneath obviously but I'll do it from the top I don't tend to fit my canopies until the aircraft's actually been built and painted it, I just find it easier to paint the canopies when they're off the kit and you can get a decent hold on stuff you know anyway let's have a look at the kit itself and let's see how really bad this model is um, try not to laugh uh, I did try not to laugh and I didn't succeed very very well um, but anyway, we'll have a look at the decals, because the decals are interesting. With Starfix kits, whether people know or whether they don't know, I'm not sure. But Starfix kits, they don't really have decal sheets. Um, oh, that's interesting, because that decal has actually come apart. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. The decal sheets on these kits are pretty terrible, and I don't think I'm going to be able to use any of these. Because they're basically action transfers, um, and they're pretty terrible. But here's the decal sheets. Do you remember when you were a kid, you got a set of action transfers and you used to put the transfer sheet onto the area of the card where you wanted your action transfer to go and then you rubbed it across with a two pence piece and they came out that's what these are they tell you to immerse them in water but I've tried loads and loads of times and they do not do that so I'll probably be sourcing some decals from my decal stash uh, for absolute sure because I don't think any of those are going to stay on the kit whatsoever um, let's have a quick look at the uh, transparency. As Starfix kits go, the transparency isn't actually that bad. It's framed quite nicely. It's relatively clear. For a Starfix kit, it's really clear because some of the ones that I've done before have been dreadful. Um, it is pretty brittle and it's, it's quite strong, but it is pretty brittle. It won't bend at all. Um, and it does file okay, so you know, sanding bits and bobs down with these kits isn't dreadful. Uh, but that canopy, I think, will be all right. I think that will look okay. We'll have a look at the fuselage halves in a minute. You've got a nose cone here, which, um, yeah, that looks like the Ecole version, the French version, doesn't it? Then you've got the wings, and the first thing I notice about the wings is they're totally bereft of any type of surface detail whatsoever. Um, all the sinkholes are on the inside, which is quite nice, but the actual quality of the plastic, as you can see there, it's pretty dire, isn't it? Um, you know, it looks like it's been joined from two ends of the mould. Yeah, there's no, no surface detail on that wing whatsoever, underside or on the top. And then you have a look at the second sprue, and the second sprue, here's these Airfix style pilots. I remember getting guys like this flying Airfix Western Scouts, but they have got an additional feature on them, which are quite large, oversized flying goggles. Can you see that? But the rest of the pilots are pretty much like 1960s Airfix pilots. Again, you've got no surface detail apart from the elevators on the um, on the tailplanes there. The seats, are, they're just slabs of plastic, aren't they? The undercarriage oleos, they're just pins. The drop tanks, again, there's no surface detail on them whatsoever. There's your pylons, the undercarriage wheels, which they're okay, I suppose. They'll paint up all right. There's those quite squarey, but they're not as bad as the Matchbox kits, which were really square. These are slightly rounded, a little bit more like the early generation Heller models, uh, which I think they've copied quite a lot of on this particular kit, because the early gen Heller kit wasn't fantastic. 
the later gen Hello Kit was actually an Airfix Rebox. Um, and then we'll have a look at this fuselage half, because this fuselage half goes together exactly the same as the Matchbox kit, but it is very similar to the Fujimi early tooled piece. Um, again, there's no detail inside, it's just a couple of pins, um, wheel wells, very little there at all. The wheel well for the front is actually pathetic, very similar to the Matchbox, in actual fact it's identical to the Matchbox. Um, there's no way that nose wheel would fit into there. Um, and I think I've got a slightly better fitting tail fin than the one on the box cover. So I think mine, it probably need a little bit of filler, but it won't be too bad. There is a little bit of surface detail in access panels and things here and there on that fuselage half, but it's not great, is it? There's not a lot of detail there at all. But then again, you're not going to rub a lot of it away, are you, when you're sanding this thing down? And it will need sanding down because that fit on the underside is pretty dreadful. But the parts are run of the mill. They seem to fit all right. They'll probably go together okay. So what I'll do is I'll just pop this all back and then we'll go through the gun like we normally do on these inbox reviews. Um, and let you know a little bit about what else is on the market. And my conclusions on this particular kit. And what I think I'm going to end up with. Which could be a bit of a laugh, couldn't it? But never mind. Anyway, let's put that into there. The decals go in here. If I were to use these decals, I'd probably have to build the French one because the German cross has just disintegrated. Just taken out of the bag. That's how that's how really good quality the decals are on Starfix kits. They're just awful. Totally unusable. I can't even get this back in here. Not that I'd want to get replacements from the Starfix for them, because what would you do? What would you use them for? Action transfers, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, we'll take that out shot and we'll just give you an idea. Put this box. There we go. Put this box. Oh. And what I want to do quickly is just go through the gump and and uh, we'll close this video down. Right. The model we're doing an inbox review on today is the Airfix, uh, sorry, the Starfix Alpha Jet, the Dassault Dornier Brigitte Alpha Jet, serial number 709-01. Its release date was 1978-79, and it was released in 172nd scale. There are decals for two versions, one a French trainer prototype and two a German weapons trainer prototype, but the prototypes Alpha Jet 1 and 2 were marked up originally as French on the starboard side and German on the port side. That's not actually true. They were they were the Alpha Jet 1 was painted up like that to represent the two different prototypes in the museum that it's been uh, featured. I'm sure it's in it's either Toulouse or Paris, I'm not sure. Uh, Alpha Jet 3 and 4 were French and German Air Force prototypes respectively to be evaluated for the um, the acquisition programme that Dassault Brigitte Dornier put the aircraft into. Now, there are 34 parts on two silver grey plastic sprues and a transparency part making 35 parts in total. The dimensions are 6.5 inches long by 5 inches in wingspan and it should sit about 2 inches high on its undercarriage. Now the options and costs, because I've done a comparison build with the Alpha Jet before, I didn't really want to go too in depth with the different scales, so I've just stuck to 172nd scale, and I might use this sort of format in the future for future inbox reviews. Now, standalone kits in 72nd scale are the Airfix Alpha Jet, which retails for about nine to twenty pound. The Fujimi Alpha Jet, which retails for about fifteen pound, the Heller Original Tool Alpha Jet, which retails for four to seven pound, the Cova Savodi Prostajove or KP Models Alpha Jet retails for between ten and twenty pound, Matchbox Original Tooling Alpha Jet retails for about fifteen to forty pound, and the Matchbox Retooled Alpha Jet. This was the one that where they changed the tail fin um, plan form and put a couple of additional parts. To represent a more up-to-date Alpha Jet, that kit retails between twenty and twenty-five pound. The Starfix kit can be acquired for between three and fifteen pound, but you 
really shouldn't be paying any more than five for it. I don't think it's worth much more than five quid. There is a company called UA, uh, sorry, YUMTK, who did an AlphaJet, which is an injection molded and vac form media kit. I've got no prices available on that model, but I'm not expecting it to be less than 20 quid. Now, some of these models rebox by other companies. There's a company called Blue Ribbon Collector Series, who rebox the original Alpha, Alpha, uh, Hella AlphaJet for 15 to 20 pound. Hella also reboxed the original Airfix kit and later toolings of the AlphaJet, and these kits retail for between ten and twelve pound. They also did a Hella Patrel de France set, which is a reboxed AlphaJet from Airfix, for thirty to thirty-five quid. I believe the other two jets were an Aragon, which was a Hella molding, and the Fuga Magister, which I believe is a Hella molding, but it could be an Airfix kit. I'd have to do some more research for that but that kit's quite collectible quite an interesting model matchbox amt they rebox the matchbox kit for 18 to 40 pound mpc rebox the airfix kit for 10 to 15 pound revel rebox the original hella kit for about 10 to 15 pound uh revel seji rebox the original hella kit for about 15 to 16 pound us airfix rebox the airfix kit no prices available on that, um, but it's probably about 10 to 12 quid. And ZTS Plastic, they rebox the Hella kit as well. For Again, I've got no prices available on that, but really you shouldn't be paying any more than about £12 for that one either. Conclusions. Now, I know this is a Starfix kit, and they have a reputation for being really quite terrible. But, that said... Starfix have brought out a number of kits that aren't really that bad. I built their not too bad Northrop F5E five, uh, Tiger 2 in recent years and their Alpha Jet looks to be of similar quality. The pilots look like they were seen piloting an Airfix jet model from the 70s, but they have slightly different features to Airfix pilots. The airframe is like the Matchbox early tooling with the mock-up style rear fin and squarish types uh, air intakes. But that all being said, I will do my best to produce an Alpha Jet prototype, but not sure if I'll be able to use the decals um, that come in the box. I'll probably have to source some decals from my uh, decal stash. Anyway, that's the inbox of you for the Starfix Alpha Jet. I hope this video is of some use or maybe some humour. Um, when this kit is built, there'll obviously be um, a build progress video and a final reveal video to show you my final thoughts on it. But I'm not expecting it to take that long to put together. And being all silver, I'm not expecting it to take very long to finish. Um, anyway, I hope this video has been of use. I hope all your projects are running smooth. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye for now.